Hello there, my name is Lily Perry and in this video I'm going to paint another still life and I'd also like to show you some little studies I've done and what they turned into and it's kind of like my philosophy on colour mixing so hopefully it's informative for you and I hope you stick around and get inspired and go create after this. So this is the composition setup I went with today and that deer is one my mum gave me when I was much younger and I decided to make a cute little paper flower crown for her because I thought why not? And then I found this mystery citrus. I actually am not sure what it was, but it eventually turned orange, so who knows? <laughs> and you can't really tell, but I put a candle behind the honey and that looked really cool when I was painting it. This little bird is from Germany and it's very adorable and it's made of wood and I just wanted to include it as like a little bit of storytelling. Of course I included a marble and I just wanted to show you I have lots of things to remind me to be patient and one of them is this mug. So I started off with willow charcoal and that's normally how I begin something like this. I think I've neglected to mention that once I start painting I erase that charcoal just so that it doesn't mix with my paint too much. You can see I have kneadable eraser on the palette there and that's what I would recommend using for most times you need an eraser because especially with like paper it doesn't upset the grain of the paper or like it doesn't tear it. So here's how it ended up looking. Pretty happy with this rough sketch. So I've listed the colors I've used below if you want to try out using my palette. I always recommend kind of experimenting and figuring out which colors you prefer because I have tried other people's palettes but I always tend to go back to ones that I know. So I'm using flat brushes and I always like ones that have a bit of spring and I've got a bunch of small round brushes. I think it's like double zeros, ones, twos, triple zeros. I really like them for detail. And this super tiny one is new to me and it's absolutely amazing for getting really fine detail. And of course my beloved angled flats. I just feel like they give a really painterly look. This is my trusty palette knife. I think I got it from my grandma and it has quite a bit of spring in it. Although you always have to be careful with these things because the sides are very sharp. So this is me mixing colours and holding it up to the object like I always do. Alright, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit here while I try to explain this. So I think in 2013 I had a bunch of stuff I was trying to finish for the European art fairs and I decided to make thumbnails of them to test out colours. and. This is honestly something that I have been looking back at ever since I made it just to see like color combos and get ideas and I don't know it's just extremely useful and I have little sketches all throughout my sketchbooks of like compositions and choosing colors and things like that and this is totally something you can do it's super fast to do it if you're doing it at a small scale and you can figure out your colors really easily like you can see the thought process here yeah so I've like written down all the colors I've used and here you can see I've tried to figure out how to paint a blueberry on a black background and um, this one was really fun to paint I needed to figure out the apples colors in its shadows not just its highlights and some stem stuff 
and it turned out really really well like the picture I have of it isn't the best because this was like 2013 I think but um I'll, I'll chuck up a picture of it so yeah it was really cool it was on like a triangle thing and I don't have that one anymore and here you can see I'm figuring out how to paint I think this was a red delicious So, and again, you can see the thought process here, like, I've taken a warm yellow and a warm red to see what that turns out like, and a cool yellow and a warm red, and just comparing those orange colours. It's, it's super, super useful thing to do. So you can do, like, colour swatches. That's definitely a thing that I somehow escaped doing in art school, but I would love to do it, like, one day. <laughs> This is as close as I've ever come. So this was trying to figure out how to paint this plum. And yeah, it actually, it's one of my favorite paintings. I don't think I have any of these paintings anymore, but I kind of wish I did. Here's a candy cane I did. And I think this flower is called a prairie gentian. And here's another apple. I really love painting spotty green apples. I love painting mandarins. I haven't yet been able to find them with leaves and stems here in Australia, but I am ever hopeful and we're heading into citrus season, so we'll see. So I hope this gives you some ideas for doing some colour exploration of your own and I hope it gets you excited about it. Even just looking at this sketchbook, I'm like, I should do this more often because it's such a great little like reminder of the colors you used and you know it's like writing down your recipes almost anyway it looks like our palette's all mixed so let's paint
And here's how it turned out in the end. If you live in the Brisbane area and would like to see this one in real life, it's actually been selected as a finalist in the Lethbridge 20,000. I'll pop some details below and hope to see you there on opening night maybe. And this is just a sneak peek of varnishing this one. Hopefully I'll have a little varnishing video up soon for you. I really hope you enjoyed this process and maybe learned a little something from my color mixing tips. Or maybe you've got something cool you can share with me in the comments below about color mixing. I hope I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching and I really hope this inspires you to get out there and create something beautiful for yourself.